Hey there Tigers, this is the Ball Science Guy and this is another one click tutoring video that you can use easily at your house or at school. I'm going to try to take you through kinetic energy, potential energy, maybe a little bit of net force and uh, explain pulleys and planes in a little bit more detail. Let's, uh, let's try to get out a sheet of paper maybe, take some notes. Uh, obviously you can rewatch this video again, but uh, let's see what we got going on here. All right, uh, kinetic energy, yep, it's all about motion and anything that is moving, okay? Anything that's moving is going to have KE. KE does stand for kinetic energy. Now, I'm writing this out really with my fingertip, so it's really hard for me to get some, uh, some good lines going here. But uh, as you can see, I've got a, uh, uh, I've got a person drawn there. Let me see if I can get that back. Uh, I've got a person drawn there that uh, allows you to see them running. There we go. Uh, and that is kinetic energy. Okay. Now the opposite of kinetic energy is going to be your potential energy. And we call that PE. So PE is potential energy. And we learned in class that was all about position. Let my finger catch up here. Let's take this object here and say it's two meters off the floor. All right. And if you consider that against one meter off the floor, the floor is the green line. All right. Two meters is going to have more potential energy. So that blue object is going to have more potential energy at 2 meters than 1 meter. All right? And, of course, gravity is pulling that blue object down. So KE is motion. Potential energy is all about the position, how high something is. Uh, let's continue with this video and talk a little bit here um, about net force. Net force is all about if an object is helping all right, um, each other or not helping. And you got to start off with the direction of the force. Arrows mean something in science. And in this case, you've got gravity pulling down, and that's never going to change. Okay? Let's, uh, let's do an example here. Um, if I have two forces and they are, let's say they are helping each other, they are working together. So what I want to do is I want to draw a couple of arrows. And these arrows are going in the same direction and they're helping each other. So we're going to add these forces together. So let's take 10 newtons on the top, 5 newtons on the bottom. We add 10 plus 5, it's going to give me 15 newtons. And I have to add an arrow. I cannot go without having an arrow at the answer. So you are either going to uh, draw your arrow in the direction of the largest force, or in this case, all your forces are to the right, your arrow's got to go to the right. Now, let's consider the following. If we have two forces and they are not going in the same direction, then these forces are not helping each other. All right? They're not going to be um, working together. They're actually working in the opposite direction. So this is going to be a little bit different. We subtract. So we're going to be subtracting these forces it's kind of like a tug of war. And you guys remember that from elementary, right? Little kid school, tug of war, field day, same thing. You're going to subtract these forces. Now I'm going to try to draw somebody here. All right. And one person is going to pull with 25 newtons, and the other person is pulling with 20 newtons. So let's subtract these out. But make sure you draw your arrows just like we did to the left and to the right. You're going to subtract that and get 5 newtons. You must choose 
an arrow. All right, Oop, just a moment. Let me try to back this up. You must choose an arrow or choose a winner of your tug of war contest. Right there, choose a winner. <sighs> Forgive me. All right, and in this case, we were going to choose the force that pulls to the right, which has got the largest force. So it's going to be 5 newtons to the right, or the person with the blue uh, head of hair. Okay? So choose a winner, and you're always going to choose the largest force. Okay, so to recap very quickly, net force all right, is really asking yourself, do they help or not help each other? All right? You're going to add if they help, subtract if it's like a tug of war or if we're going in the opposite direction. Okay? That's how you start that off. Let's look at pulleys briefly as, uh, as we get close to the end here. The more pulleys means less work. And we have a pulley set up in the class, and we've talked about this. So if you have less force needed, that means the same thing as less work. All right, and if you think about in the classroom where I've got the three pulleys set up, that's less force needed versus the one pulley that I've got to the right of that. Okay, let's do something here. Let's draw this out. If I have a rope and, uh, and I've got a one pulley set up, that's going to help move the object in an upward direction. All right, gravity's always pulling down, so if we pull on the rope, the object will go up. One pulley doesn't really give you a mechanical advantage. It just helps you change direction. Now, we start adding more and more pulleys, the riddle's going to change. In this example, I have four pulleys, and I've got the same object. Let's say it's 100 newtons. Think of that as having, all right, Four helpers. Every pulley is going to be a helper. If you wanted to calculate the force needed to lift a hundred newtons using four pulleys, just take a hundred newtons, divide by four, and you get 25 newtons. That's pretty significant. So you can move a hundred newton object with only 25 newtons if you set up four pulleys. Let's, uh, let's explore planes. Planes is just a, another fancy middle school word for ramp. The longer the plane, in this case, all right, the less work you're going to have to do, the more easy it is to move stuff. kind of ran out of war, room on my whiteboard. But the longer it is, the less work or the easier it is to move stuff. Here's an example. I'm going to take a plane with that 100 newton object and I'm going to put it on the 10 meter ramp or the 10 meter plane and I'm also going to consider it or compare it to 20 meters. If I put it on the 20 meter plane it's going to require less force, less work all right, to try to get that object to the top of that 20 meter ramp. Now we're talking about the same object, the same box, the same load. I use the word load a lot in class. So shorter ramp, more work, right? Longer ramp, less work. So let's recap real quick. We talked about kinetic energy and potential energy. PE, the higher something is, the more energy. Kinetic energy, it's all about motion and movement. Net force, you have to ask yourself, right? Is the object moving? If the object's not moving, it's balanced. If the object is moving, it's unbalanced. And there we go, my fingers are catching up. And we just have a simple add or subtract question. If the arrows are going together, we add them. If they are not going together, we subtract. Pulleys. The more pulleys you have, all right, the easier 
Mm. Yeah, the easier it is to lift an object. Okay? More is better with pulleys. With planes, the longer the plane is, the better. The longer the plane, the less work. All right. Uh, one more little trick, if you will, on pulleys. Just divide the load, all right, by the number of pulleys that you have. Okay? So count your pulleys and just divide that out. For example, if you have a load um, of 100 newtons and you have 25 pulleys, oh my gosh, what would that look like? Divide 100 by 25. It's only going to take you 4 newtons of force to move that load now. Kind of crazy, but more pulleys, the easier the, the, easier the, uh, the load is to lift. All right. If, uh, if I could, I would recommend uh, watching this video again. It's a simple one-click tutoring video. Um, I've got another video that I've, uh, that I've recorded and I shared with some of the classes, um, also titled uh, Kinetic Energy, Net Force, uh, maybe Motion. Um, and I'm going to also be putting a, another video together. Uh, on speed, calculating speed, how to solve that riddle, and let's put some pictures together that deal with, uh, with motion. Um, I think in math class you might call it graphing. So uh, that's all I have for this video. Thank you for tuning in uh, to today's one-click science video, and I promise you this is so easy that a bald guy can do it.